Okay, we're going to start here in just a minute. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm David Green. I'm the Deputy Chief with the Fire Rescue Department and the County's Emergency Manager. Uh, we're broadcasting live today from the Fire Rescue Emergency Operations Center, and I'm joined as usual by Fire Rescue Chief Barry McRoy, Colleton County Sheriff Charles Gent, and Walterboro Police Department Chief Wade Marvin. We want to take this opportunity to address any questions that you have, uh, but as usual, we want to address a few topics first. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go to the link there, colletonfire.com slash questions and uh, submit your questions and we'll answer them uh, live. So uh, first, although hurricane season doesn't officially begin until June 1st of, of this year, uh, Tropical Storm Arthur gave us an earlier than expected start last week, uh, passed by our coast last weekend, and uh, this early start is not new. Uh, in fact, Tropical Storm Alberto formed on May 25th of 2018, and Tropical Storm Andrea formed on May 20th of 2019. Uh, so for the, for the past three years, we've seen storms uh, form before the official begin of, of hurricane season. And uh, the peak of hurricane season does not usually occur until August or September. However, it's important that you prepare now. Uh, and I'd like to ask Chief McCroy to come up and talk about evacuation zones. Thank you, David. Uh, first of all, you should know if you live in an evacuation zone, there are two evacuation zones in Colleton County. Zones A and Zone B. Uh, they're depicted here on this map. Uh, this is the CSX rail that runs pretty much from Jacksonboro through Green Pond over to Numacy. And Zone A is the um, area south of the CSX rail tracks. And that includes the communities of Edisto Beach, Jacksonboro, Green Pond, Bennett's Point, Wiggins, Whitehall, and uh, the uh, Zone B consists of areas like Cottageville uh, from the Dorchester County line to Walterboro on uh, Highway 17A, and then South Jeffries Boulevard, areas south of that, uh, east of Interstate 95 over to Hampton County. This includes anyone living uh, along the rivers of Cumbie, Ashipu, or Edisto. And these areas are subject to uh, flooding and storm surge. So that's these little fingers that you see extending out in these areas. Additionally, you can uh, um, you should know your home's location. You can go to uh, South Carolina EMD's website and uh, uh, just click on the Know Your Zone area. And in the upper um, left corner of the map, there's a place where you can type your address. And it can tell you exactly what zone you live in. Of course, if you don't live in a zone, then you don't have to evacuate. Uh, additionally, South Carolina EMD has a, uh, a very good web, uh, a very good app for your uh, cell phone, and uh, there's a number of useful tools on that. You can identify your uh, evacuation zone, but it also tells you what to keep for an uh, evacuation kit or uh, where uh, shelter locations are. And a lot of that is on the South Carolina EMD website. That's S C E M D. If you live in an evacuation zone or if you live in a mobile home, you should begin making plans now. Uh, you probably would want to stay with a family member or a friend outside of the evacuation zone. As a last resort, and if uh, those other options are not available, uh, Colleton County will open a shelter at the Colleton County High School at 150 Cougar Nation Drive. You need to remember that a shelter uh, lacks a lot of the nice comforts of home. Uh, you may not have a cot. There will be food provided, but it's not very comfortable there. And this year we've got the increased problems with the COVID-19. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about assembling disaster supplies. Um, I know it 
says make common sense to gather supplies, but you really don't think about it until it's, it's almost too late. So we're going to talk about it now and maybe try to make a list. Um, materials and tools of emergency uh, home repairs, such as heavy plastic, um, sheeting, plywood, hammers, etc. cetera. Um, prescription drugs, make sure you have what you would need um, in case you, you couldn't get out to, to get them or if it was uh, close to getting refilled, uh, have that done. Uh, Three-day supply of drinking water or more. Food that you do not have to refrigerate or cook. Uh, first aid supplies. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, portable uh, weather radio. Um, flashlights. Uh, batteries for the flashlights. A manual can opener. Batteries. Chargers. Um, fuel up your vehicles or any ATVs or anything and have extra uh, tanks you know, to refill them if needed. Um, have cash on hand. Make sure you get an insurance checkup. Keep in mind that your homeowner's insurance covers the cost of temporary repairs for hurricane damage, as well as reasonable additional living expenses uh, over and above your normal living expenses if you have any uh, to reallocate, such as the ex uh, extra expense of getting to work or school if your temporary, if your temporary home is in a uh, different community. However, your homeowner's policy doesn't cover flood damage, so you may want to consider looking into flood insurance. You may also need to separate uh, policy for protection against wind and windblown water damage. If you have any questions about what your current policy will cover, or need um, <coughs> to augment your current coverage, contact your insurance professional. Um, above all, have a plan in case uh, you know, in case it's needed. Um, you just need to think ahead and be prepared. Make sure that you're, um, you know, they say before you go on vacation, um, you get more done in the last five hours than you do all week. So we don't want that to happen. Just make sure you're ahead of schedule. Make sure you're preparing in advance. And if you have any questions, you can reach out. I'll be glad to help walk somebody through that process. Sure. Thank you, Chief. Uh, good common sense advice there. I want to add a couple of things on that you can do to have yourself prepared in advance before we end up in that last stage as you referred to. Uh, one thing we see all the time is that people don't often make preparations for their pets for evacuation. Uh, you start thinking about having food on hand, medicines on hand for your pets, how are you going to transport them and where are you going to lodge them. Um, you got to keep in mind that a lot of hotels are not going to allow have you to have pets. Um, your local kennels, especially those that are in the storm facility, might not be open during the storm. So have those plans in place for your pets now and know what they are. You also want to take this time now to take an inventory of your personal belongings. This is going to lead into insurance purposes like you talked about. Consider videoing and photographing all the items inside and outside of your residence. Make note of the serial numbers of your expensive items. Secure your important paperwork that could be damaged in a storm. Have these accessible and consider taking them with you when you evacuate. Um, before you leave the home, you want to make sure you're securing certain things. A lot of people don't turn off their LP gas tanks. That can be a hazard. Uh, shut off your water and unplug your non-essential appliances. Um, one thing you need to keep in mind, this includes things like electric golf cart chargers. Uh, we had an incident, I can remember, after Hurricane Irma in which a house fire was started when the power cut back on and uh, caught fire to the charging device. So you don't want to survive a hurricane and then have your house destroyed because something wasn't unplugged. If you do choose to stay, and again, we always discourage people from doing that. If the evacuation order is going, you start making your plans. But if you choose to stay, you need to keep in mind that first responders may not be able to get to you once conditions deteriorate to a certain point. There are wind speed thresholds in which first responders have to shelter in place themselves for their own safety. Um, we've heard of situations in which people have gone in their attics in the middle of a storm, called 911 asking for help, but help can't come. You can't put a helicopter in the air, you can't put a boat in the water, you can't put a vehicle on the road in the middle of a hurricane. So if you stay and it gets bad, help may not be able to get to you for a time. You're going to be on your own for a while. It's also worth remembering that a lot of municipalities will shut off their water prior to an event for safety reasons. And if it cannot be turned back on and you stay, you could be in your home without access to running water for a long period of time. So remember, just because you have a generator and you think you can ride something out, you need to take these other factors into consideration. And finally, I want to talk really briefly about the town of Edisto Beach has recently implemented a decal system. This is something that came up, uh, and, and a lot of beach communities use this. But it's a, it's a system that you can put on a vehicle that helps you streamline your access through checkpoints. Um, it's an optional system. It's not required. 
but if you don't have this sticker on your car and you go through a checkpoint for re-entry either during you know like we saw during the COVID event or during a, a weather event um, you're still gonna have to show paperwork showing your proof of residency and your ownership um, if you have that sticker it's just gonna streamline that process and minimize the contact you have to have with the checkpoint people if you're interested in this contact the town of Edisto Beach and you'll have to provide them the appropriate documentation thank you all and be safe <clears throat> Appreciate it. So, unfortunately, the National Hurricane Center predicts a greater than average number of tropical cyclones this season. Uh, however, you know whether we have two named storms or 20 named storms, uh, it only takes one to threaten our county or cause significant damage to our community. Uh, we need to also remember that any tropical cyclone that approaches our area is a threat. We often hear citizens say it's only a Category 1 hurricane, and that's very dangerous thinking. Uh, just in the last 10 years, Category 1 storms, uh, Hurricane Irene, Isaac, Sandy, Hermine, Matthew, Nate, and Florence have caused 175 deaths and $103 billion in damages, and those were all Category 1 storms. We should also mention that the cone of uncertainty used to illustrate the predicted path of the center of an approaching tropical storm or hurricane is exactly that. It is uncertain. Uh, it's constructed based on the National Hurricane Center errors in the last five years. Two-thirds of the time, the center of the storm will be inside the cone, which of course means that one-third of the time, the center of the, of the hurricane will be outside of the cone. Uh, more importantly, the improvements in forecast modeling have caused the cones to shrink over the last decade or two. While this better predicts the storm's potential track, it also means that more and more effects will be outside of the cone of uncertainty. And that's something uh, everybody need to be sure everybody understands is uh, that cone is not the limit of the effects. It is uh, the predicted track of the center of the storm. So we're going to see more and more of the storm's effects outside of that cone of uncertainty. Everyone remembers Hurricane Dorian last year, uh, but you probably don't remember Hurricane Lorenzo. And this was Hurricane Lorenzo. Uh, Lorenzo killed 19 people, including four in North Carolina, two in New York, one in Rhode Island, and one in Florida due to rip currents and caused $362 million in damage. Uh, this reinforces the importance of focusing on hazards and impacts as opposed to the storm's category or exact path. We need to also remember that high winds are not the only killer hazard during hurricanes. In fact, storm surge kills 49% of the people, rainfall and flooding kills 27%, and 31% of post-impact deaths are due to heart attack. The sheriff mentioned earlier that uh, we, we may not be able to get to you during a storm, and and for some period after a storm. Uh, so if you have a heart attack afterwards, it's possible that if you did not evacuate, uh, we may not be able to reach you to care for you. Uh, we'd also like to mention, uh, to remind everyone that anybody that sustained damage as a result of the April 13th tornado outbreak, uh, that you may be eligible for financial assistance from FEMA uh, to register and see if you qualify. You can contact FEMA at 1-800-621-3362 or visit their website at disasterassistance.gov. SEDOT is gonna begin their final pass for vegetative debris pickup uh, next week, starting on Tuesday, May 26th. Uh, and they are unable to pick up debris on private property. Therefore, you should ensure that you have any limbs or brush, uh, any vegetative debris in the right of way uh, on the shoulder of the roadway by the beginning of next week. Finally, we would like to reiterate that the COVID-19 pandemic is still very much active. Although businesses and parks are reopening, it is important to protect yourself. In Colleton County yesterday, uh, we had a total of 60 cases and 29 current cases um, for yesterday's stats, including 24 cases in 29488 zip code, 2 in the 29481 zip code, 1 in the 29475 zip code, 1 in 29446, and 1 in 29435. There have also been four COVID-19 related deaths in Colleton County in the last two days. Statewide, there's over 9,000 total cases, uh, 119 new cases since yesterday, uh, and there have been 407 total deaths uh, in South Carolina. As we transition back into open social settings, please stay, take steps to protect yourself. Uh, wash your hands, maintain social distancing to the degree possible, and wear face coverings whenever possible in, in public settings. Okay, we'll uh, take any questions that we have here. Um, do we have any questions? Okay. 
Okay, well, I'm being told we don't have any questions. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. And um, as Chief said, y'all please reach out to our agencies if there's anything we can do to you or if you think of any questions um, after, after this live feed, uh, give us a call. Thank you.